God, how he touched my staff this week. She was about to pray about her and she had some more and she was feeling good. And at 96, Lord, have mercy. God is good. I'm going to ask her son, Deacon Scott, to come and take us to the throne of grace. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
the worship leaders. God bless you on today. My sound engineer department. There's someone new back there today. Tell her God bless you. Tell her God bless you. Keep the day to our server back there. Thank God for the two of our usher today. Stand together for the love of usher. Thank God. Pray for us. Let's keep her in prayer this week. Don't worry about what it's about. You just pray. There's a prayer line. You may know what it's about. If you weren't going, you just listen. God bless you to our musicians on today. God bless you. Our preacher today. God bless you. Our presiding elder. All the deacons, saints, even our babies in the house today. I'm glad to be in the service today. Amen, amen. So we're going to now have our offering on today. Get ready for the word of God. Now I need your attention up here. Our preacher get ready to come forward. And I believe we got a word you want to say. And the Bible says you got to be here, let it hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So we have prayed, we are believing, we are trusting, and now we want to hear what the Lord has to say to the church. God bless you.
and as fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Let's jump to verse 37. Verse 30 says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 41 in this Bible. Okay. Then they said, then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. Amen. On this National Baptist Church Sunday, I want to preach from the Somali topic, Long Live the Church. Long Live the Church. Due to the pandemic, we were out of physical fellowship with each other for over three months, and some churches are now approaching to six to seven months. While others are content with virtual church, it is necessary that we gather physically. There is something that happens when believers come together. I'll just use this what happened this morning. Imagine if we weren't at church and she was home by herself. How that could have been? But it is necessary for the saints of God. virtual church, we were distracted. Our phone could ring and we were distracted. Something could some of y'all was watching TV on virtual church and you were distracted. I had to call some folk and tell them get up out the bed because we can see your bed. You were distracted. But there's something about coming together. We lack engagement with each other over virtual church. For the first couple of weeks, virtual church, I can be honest, wasn't popping for me. It wasn't until we were about to come back to church that virtual church we started standing up and clapping and shouting and stuff. Oh, virtual church, it just wasn't for me because there's something about being with Israel. There's something about the church. And I can be honest, church saved my life. If my mother did not give me to a sanctified woman, I don't know where I would be, but because she was in church, she brought me to church and church and had to save my life. How do I know? I'm going to be honest, this is you, you Sunday. Yesterday, my best friend had a birthday party. She turned 22, and my best friend is carnal. I'm going to be honest, she ain't saved, and she really don't even really believe in God. And uh, I, went to, I went to her birthday party, and all they had at their birthday party was chicken, meatballs, and alcohol. Uh, and uh, literally, that was the whole menu. And oh, and Shasta sodas, and anybody who's going to be here, I don't like Shasta sodas. Those are the church sodas. And so when I got there and I've been helping them set up and I saw all my other friends and stuff, they were drinking. And the carnal me said, one drink won't hurt you. But the foundation that was laid in me said, you can die after you get that one drink and you can make eternity. It's the foundation that was laid. Can I be honest with you, young adults? I know I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and we might need children church. But sometimes my hormones do rise, but the foundation that was laid in me said you can have sex for a moment and then you pray in it. That's the foundation that was laid by the church. That's the foundation that only the church can lay. Let me be honest. Yeah, I want to be booed up. Yeah, I want to not listen chill. But the foundation that's been laid
saints go out and say, build your hopes on things eternal. And now I get it, because these temporary moments of pleasure, these material things will fade away. Huh? But the thing eternal is the Holy Ghost. They'll hold me until the eternity. A moment of pleasure can have you in years of bondage. A moment of pleasure will take years for you to get delivered from. A moment of pleasure will have you at the altar for years, crying at the God to draw me out of it. A moment of temporary Everything to God in prayer. You know, sometimes you can be so sweet to trust in Jesus. 
Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the say the Lord. Yes. It's not so much about the, 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 the music. The music is good. But it's about the words and the meaning behind what you're saying. It's about what's going on. Because most times when, I, when I'm down and out, I don't jump to he's intentional, never failing. Most times I jump to the songs that have a little substance behind it. I jump to the songs with the name of Jesus. Hey! Hey! But if you don't know Jesus, you listen to the songs and say, who's intentional? Who is it? Because these new songs never mention the name of Jesus. But you start thinking, who's intentional? Who's You'll miss it. Because just because it has the right beat doesn't mean it produces the right sound. Uh, just because the just because it has a good click track to it doesn't mean that it's always right. The right sound yes. provokes the Holy Ghost to come in and to shift his weight around. Like this morning. The right sound makes God get God's attention. The right sound produces miracles, signs, and wonders, and it doesn't have anything to do with the beat. But everything to do with the words. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember a time the saints could get caught up without any music, but they would start thinking about the goodness of the Lord. And you would start hearing some hallelujah. You start hearing some thank you, Jesus. Somebody get up and do one and even another. Let's be honest. It wasn't about the sound. Yes. More about the sound. Did y'all go catch? It wasn't about the sound. It was about the sound that was being rehearsed in their ears. Yes. So now today we don't have the right music. Y'all sitting down like God ain't do nothing for you. We don't have the right music. You act like you can't even open up your mouth. We don't have the right music. You act like you can't even clap your hands. But I'm reminded of a song that says, "I will bless the Lord at all." Gave them 
utterance. We don't just come to church for church. We come to church with an expectation for an experience. If you treat church like a regular normal day activity, you'll never get anything from God. But when you treat church like I'm coming, God, I don't know what you want to do, but I'm coming today to get something from you. That's when you get your blessing. When you take your mind off of just coming to church for church, off of something you do routinely, and say, God, this is what I need. Church, you just don't come to church for church. You come with an expectation. Because expectation is the breeding ground for God to show up. And show up. Expectation is the breeding ground for God to do something. Thank you, son. Thank you. I don't need that right now. Thank you. Uh, expectation is the breeding ground. And these people that were in the upper room came with the right mindset. Truth is, they didn't know what was going to happen. But they had a promise from God that if you go and tarry in Jerusalem, you shall be endowed with power. They didn't know what power looked like. They didn't know what power was going to resemble. But they knew that God told them to go. God is telling us every Sunday to go to church. You don't know what church is going to look like that day. You don't know what's going to happen that day. We say it all the time. Sometimes I come to church, I don't know if I'm going to be on the floor crying. Or if I don't know, I'm going to be running around shouting. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know. Sunday by Sunday, that's why pastor said, you don't want to miss church. Because Sunday by Sunday, you don't know what God is going to do. You don't know what's going to be the Sunday to pray. pray. You don't know what Sunday is going to be the Sunday to deliver. You don't know what Sunday is going to be the Sunday to God save one of your family members. You don't know what Sunday is going to be the Sunday you might get filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't know what Sunday is going to be that day. But the only way is if you come looking. When I come to church, I'm looking for something. When I come to church, I come looking to experience the fullness of the Godhead. I want the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want all of them to talk to me and deal with it. I come to church looking for a miracle, expecting God to blow my mind. I'm expecting God to do that something every Sunday. When I come to church. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to kind of go in the left field really quickly. Oh, and many people may not agree with me, but I'm glad to be Pentecostal by denomination. Uh, as well, I am not as uh, hoopla about denominations, because God can use anything and anybody. I'm glad to be Pentecostal by denomination, because my denomination was birthed out of an experience. My denomination wasn't just something people said, let's grab this here, let's grab that there, and let's grab this here and make this a denomination. No, my denomination was birthed out of Acts chapter 2. If we go and study uh, William J. Seymour, who is what, what they would say was a pioneer of Pentecostalism, who what they say offset Pentecostalism, uh, he believed that there was something more than just salvation and sanctification. That's what churches was preaching during that time, was be saved. And then there was a holy church, holiness churches, that said you need to be sanctified. But then William J. Seymour said, salvation just ain't it. Sanctification just ain't it. And he started preaching about the Holy Ghost before he had even received the Holy Ghost. He knew that there was something else to this experience with Christ than just salvation and sanctification. He began to preach Acts chapter 2 in a little stable. First it was his house. And they grew out, out of his house and they broke his whole porch down. And uh, he said, I need to go somewhere else. And he took them to a little barnyard, a little stable that used to be a church, but then they made it a stable. And he ran this uh, revival, it was called the Azusa Street Revival. He ran this Bible for almost two to three years. Every day they were in church, crying out to God because he knew it was something more. Than just that. There was something more. So why am I glad to be Pentecostal? Because while people said it don't take all of that. Uh, uh, y'all just some holy rulers and uh, y'all some Jesus freaks and uh, you don't need to go to church that many times. There was somebody who said it takes all of that. It, uh, it takes all of actually, it takes all of that and some more. I'm just doing the best I can. about receiving the Holy Ghost. There were some people who said, I know I need it. I know I need the Holy Ghost because I don't really have power without the Holy Ghost. I know I need the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Ghost that keeps me. There was somebody who said, no, it takes more than that. It takes more than just coming to church. There was somebody who said, no, it takes coming to the altar and calling on the name of Jesus until God comes and changes your situation. There was somebody who said, it takes more than that. I believe in the Pentecostal way. 
it's religious. But the Bible says in Timothy, there's a good religion and there's a bad religion. What we're doing over here is good religion. Let me let you know that. I don't need all of that. I need an experience with the Holy Ghost. Because I want the Holy Ghost to sit on me. Hallelujah. I want it to sit on me so much that I can't even move. I want it to sit on me that I can't even do anything else. I just want it to... After you have an experience, you should have an effect. You got to up that effect. The Bible says that after they had experienced this, there were people who wanted to know, what happened to you? What's all that commotion going up there in that room? When people walk by this church, sometimes they want to know, what's all that noise going on in there? Y'all been on this corner for 60-something years, and y'all keep on making the same kind of noise. It's all holy. Kind of noise because every Sunday we make a different noise and we get better and better and better and better. So then, when, you know, when people come in off the street, y'all know sometimes y'all be scared of them because they don't look like y'all. But the Holy Ghost is drawing them. There's a sound that's there for peace, and the Holy Ghost is telling them, You need to go in there. They do something right up in there. So, Peter got up and gave them a sermon, but I'm going to call it a testimony because that's the same thing of what they had experienced. And we had given them that testimony. This is verse 37 that I read. They said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. Yeah. Verse 41. And they gladly received the word and were baptized in the same uh, day. They were added unto them about 3,000 fold. When you have an experience with God, people ought to be able to tell. Uh, that should be something different about you. The saints just say, I look at my hands and my hands are at you. I look at my feet and the feet are too. And they ain't mean they went to go get a pedicure and a manicure. That means something about the Holy Ghost changed them that they had the same hands, but they were a new creature. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, Mother Davis came up to me, you know, saying it, Mother. And she said, you got the glove. And I'm like, what you mean, Mother? I look the same. She was like, you just got the glow. And then that year, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Sister Janice and Bishop Moses weren't able to come to convocation. And I think two weeks or a week later, I'll never forget it. They came back. And she said, the Holy Ghost is there right now, yes. And I remember the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, they got a hold of me again. Why? Somebody needs to be able to bear witness that you've been changed. Because if you 
ever butchered for God, the devil will try to make you forfeit your blessing. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. It, it was the same night I received the Holy Ghost. The devil tried to tell me he don't die. Yeah. 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 And I, 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 I nobody here has received the Holy Ghost in service for a long time. I think I'm the last person in service to receive the Holy Ghost. And um, the devil's like, you don't got it. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we come from a church. They ain't gonna tell you if you got the Holy Ghost or not. You know, nobody, I don't think nobody told me I got the Holy Ghost. I think I just popped up off the floor and said, I got it with the dancing and fell back out. An effect yeah. that it has on you yeah. and that it has on people. As much as my friend that I started off talking about, she doesn't really believe in God. She's a, a Moorish American. My grandfather wrote the Bible for them. Mm -hmm. They're very famous in their religion. Wow. And as much as she may not say, you know, I don't believe in God, but every now and then she says, I really want to come to church with you. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes, I The, the, the daughter of the person who wrote that Bible will send me Christian songs every week. You know, so as much as they may think that me just hanging around is because I like their house and they always got food and everything else, I'm having an effect on them. Now, Lord, if you do these things for us, we will be sure to give your name the praise. Let the word 